on my second stop on my summer coaster road trip going to all of the parks in the northern midwest etc etc that i've never been to i decided to go to valley fair um, in the minneapolis area it's uh, a park that not a lot of people talk about because it's competing with michigan's adventure for the worst uh, amusement park in the cedar fair chain however it's still a Cedar Fair Park, and you gotta visit that if you wanna be, you know, if you wanna have the flex that you've been to all of the things. Earlier in the day, we woke up at screw you o'clock to go to Arnold's Park, which was like a three hour drive there. We spent a couple hours there. And then from there, same day, our second of three stops for the day. It was Nick Universe after this. It's crazy, crazy shit. Um, it was this, what you're seeing in front of you, Valley Fair. Um, I think the only people even clicking this video are people from Minnesota, uh, hardcore enthusiasts, or people who've definitely never heard of Valley Fair. But either way, there's a FedEx truck over there. Anyway, we're, we're turning left and I think we're actively fucking up, um, go, not going in the correct direction. But anyway, right there next to us, you see uh, freaking Steel Venom which is the only intimate impulse that still like holds you and does that jerky weird crazy shit and it's pretty pretty sick right there is mild sorry, wild wild thing um you know your your average morgan bullshit uh we're, we'll talk about that later um there's the train they're just choosing not to use instead of you know hiring more staff and paying them better and you know all that stuff so we're turning right here in not the correct place, as you can see on this sign right here, which says no guest entry. So, uh, oops. So I guess that's an illegal turn right there. I mean, I hope nobody uses that as evidence to fuck my life over or something, you know? State trail. What does that even mean? All right, so down there, there's Excalibur, which was pissing me off. Look, th look there's the middle, then the reason I'm flipping it off isn't because I'm disrespecting like a one of one aerodynamics cool thing. The reason why I'm, you know, doing this crazy spastic thing with my hand, anyway, is, well, the logic here is that uh, we were looking at Q times and other websites that kind of keep track of uh, crowd calendars and what have yous. And look, wait, hold on, there's a thing, look at the thing holding you, it's like freaky shit. Anyway, um, and we saw that Excalibur just straight hadn't run yet this season. And even when it does run, um, it's a 20% chance that the damn thing will even open because it's like, it, 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 you think Lightning Rod is a downtime champion? I think Excalibur actually has that crown. And it was easily my number one or number two, maybe number two if I'm gonna be real, but still, uh, anticipated ride in this amusement park. And I'll spoil it. We actually got a ride on it. It was open for like 15 damn minutes and we'll get to that. But Excalibur is definitely the success story of the day for me, having ridden it pretty sick. So my friend is still wearing the same Wonderland Amusement Park uh, t-shirt from the last video because as I said, for receipts, it's still the same day. So, you know, 19, 20, 20, no, it's a 22 hour day. That's what we actually did. I'm pretty sure that's accurate. Insanity. Um, so we're walking through the parking lot and what we're discussing, I don't have any idea because this is a voiceover and I'm recording this over silence. Um, down there you have what I already talked to you about, so I'm not even sure how I'm supposed to fill the time on this stupid shit. Um, oh, oh yeah, I guess I'll talk about this. Like, one of the reasons that I can get away with, uh, come, going on these trips is because like my friend's mom over here has like some kind of like hotel point thing and long story short man as long as i'm traveling with my buddy here dude i ain't paying for shit as far as hotels are concerned and that makes it really nice uh down there on the purple circle thing it's you know the larson loop plague that you see in all these amusement parks oh it's the fucking ninth roller coaster at valley fair no it isn't that's an actual tra tragic lie and i don't want to be hearing all that shit i like how they did duel the not roller coaster and uh, steel venom that was kind of cool um but still larson loops aren't roller coasters and people who perpetuate that lie are complete pieces of shit um it just, i always feel weird like cursing like when a child or children are in view like I, i'm not trying to upset families or anything um 
nobody assumed I was calling the kids a piece of shit. I don't know why I'm even defending myself on this. Right in front of us is a Valley Fair trash can. Um, needs to be refilled. Apparently I'm seeing things creeping up to the top there. To the left is a red van. The license plate 656. Uh, mm, there's the, uh, the, the uh, Shakopee, Minnesota police down there. A flag. I really wish I didn't record all of this. Um, what what else can I do? Stall for time. Dude has a sick t-shirt. Look at that. Uh, season pass. Oh yeah, I got something for you. Uh, since I only get a Cedar Fair Platinum Pass on years where I expect to go to a few, quite a few of the parks, like four or five of them, mainly because I live in New Orleans. Like, it's like magnetically far away every Cedar Fair park. My closest park is World of Fun at a solid like 11 hours away. It's bullshit. So I... My first park that I was going to go to from the chain in the year is Valley Fair, so I was like, okay, cool, I'm going to have a Valley Fair Platinum Pass. So this is my Cedar Fair home park. Um, a, a resident of New Orleans, Louisiana, my home park is in Minnesota, which the only other connection I really have with Minnesota other than coming here as a kid is that uh, the... Uh, 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 a road near my house called Airline Highway, United States Highway 61. People think it ends in Louisiana, but it actually ends in Minnesota. Today you learned. Uh, nobody gives a shit. Uh, so we're walking this way, I guess. Uh, Attitudes. Sounds like my favorite store. Um, hold on. I'm going to have a little bit of my uh, my my pen. My, my pen. I'm going to smoke that. Listen to this. A map. Oh, she's patting his head. He, he's a good boy. He did something that she appreciated. So right in front of us is um, a kind of strange ass roller coaster, high roller. It's from everybody's favorite manufacturer called the Opus Group, um, whose entire portfolio. They, they also had. They, they were formerly known as the Rauenhorst Corporation, and here is their entire portfolio. High roller. That's it. They only made one of these. Um, that's it. Uh, and as you would expect from a one coaster, wood coaster manufacturer, it's horrible. <laughs> you know how like wood coasters can be like bad, horrible to where you really like them? You know, like old school Grizzly when it was an actual piece of shit before they retract it and fix it or whatever. That's not this. This isn't bad good. This is just bad. Like. It, the airtime doesn't exist. It blue balls you incessantly into thinking airtime is coming. So you're like, well, that wasn't a moment, nor was that a moment. But look at this. This is clearly the moment. No airtime, no nothing. You don't even, your, your butt doesn't even begin to hint at moving up off the seat. And then the next time you're like, well, this one's the one. No. And then it has these like crap ass laterals. Uh, really. Nothing redeems it, and I'm glad I got the credit. I'm not sure I'm riding that shit again. To the left is Corkscrew. If you've ridden Corkscrew at Cedar Point, or Corkscrew at Michigan's Adventure, or Corkscrew at, I don't know, Silverwood, etc., it's the same shit. Um, and it's not a very good example of one either. It kind of sucks. Um, I mean, the general public, you know, I really don't even care what I was going to say about the general public. I'm wasting my time talking. Right in front of us, we see Camp Snoopy nonsense that I, I just don't really care. Uh, so over there, there's an SNS tower and corkscrew. Do I? Did I write corkscrew in the video here? I don't even effing remember. I think I did. Well, um, anyway, as far as the Excalibur journey is concerned, I guess I'll just start talking about that for a little bit. The the roller coaster we went in with zero zero expectations of the coaster being open, which was already kind of lame. And this park, we were looking at the map like everything was closed, Renegade was closed. This park, it was like playing, let me, let me TLDR my day at Valley Fair, which was pretty rough. First of all, we had to get fast past the fast lane plus. It was just mandatory to even have a shot at riding this because the lines were like 73 hours long. They were all fucked up. Uh, and the coasters opening and closing, we walked from one side of the park to the other like 22 times because they were ping-ponging which fucking rides were open. So you know of the major rides, you got Renegade, Excalibur, and uh, Wild Thing over there. These sons of bitches were opening for 15 minutes intermittently 
and sometimes it would be all of them and then when one of them opened up the whole park ran to that one and then it'd be like <laughs> it's like i'm actually close it was like that the whole day the crowds were slammed the lines were fucked i was expecting this to not be <laughs> that bad of a day but that's what I get for coming to an amusement park on a bullshit day like Saturday. I would never, ever go to any park like this on a Saturday unless I was forced to based on the geography of my road trip. But anyway, this is a Valley Fair Saturday. I recommend it zero because this is already a marginal park. You need to come here on a Wednesday or don't come at all, like seriously. So we were ping-ponging around. We managed to get like all of the credits, which is freaking remarkable. I'm not even sure how we did that. Um, but um, we did. We, I think there's one except for my Cosmic Coaster. I, did I ride Cosmic Coaster? Now I have to check my coaster count, man. I don't want to be telling y'all lies. Uh, hold on, coaster count 365. I'm, I, I was very high here, so in those Cosmic Coasters, the same goddamn single helix and pearl of BS that they have at like every damn kid section of every damn park, Valley Fair. That, Wait, oh yeah, there's no coasters named Valley Fair. I don't know how to search. Yeah, I'm missing a credit, so I'm missing Cosmic Coaster, right? Okay, cool, cool. I just want to make sure that I'm not bullshitting y'all because bullshitting people is not how I like to operate my life. Uh, so we're walking to Excalibur and we end up hearing from someone that it was testing. And we're like, well, shit, might as well walk toward that motherfucker. So we did do that um, and Long story short, we got teased that it was opening multiple times and then finally it did. We saw a train cycle and the people on it and we just hauled to the bitch. And we got our ride and I absolutely adored the damn thing, dude. And I'll interrupt this story real quick. There's Mad Mouse. Uh, if you want to ride an Arrow Mouse, don't go to Michigan's Adventure. Wait in the shit line for this one because the one at Michigan's Adventure is so bad. I'm gonna talk a lot about that in my Michigan's Adventure review. The line is one of the worst values of bullshit ever. Both parks run like one damn car on the track at a time, but at least this one doesn't stack them like nine at a time in the station. I mean, either way, arrow mice are good enough for me to actually rank them. Like I, arrow, ma uh, arrow mice are the very exception because most wild mouse uh, variants are just crap and I don't even think they're worth ranking because like when, with my rankings it has to be better than the worst arrow mine train for me to care to rank it at all and most wild mouse coasters don't but the arrow ones do because they have some actual airtime they feel pretty fun and they feel more complete because of diversity of forces not just you know lateral bullshit the entire time they feel pretty cool kind of you know with the same energy of like the the mine trains with the way the tracks feel so it's easily i think i might be lying with it easily there's probably an exception i'm forgetting about but it's like a tier wild mouse so i, I recommend it i mean not if the line is like long as bullshit but you know you make your own decisions to the right is stadium grill um i've never been there so i can't give you an opinion on that that kid looks dejected i hope he figures out whatever bumped him out uh up over there there's that's I can't even read that. Senor Vargas? What does it say? That's a weird name for a restaurant. That sounds like uh, something you see, like like a hole in the wall in your like local local neighborhood kind of taqueria, not something that a corporate amusement park kind of weird Coca-Cola. Yeah. Soak City, um, I don't go in there, and mainly I don't like filming in water parks because that's just a creepy, weird place to be filming, even if your intentions are just, you know, to give a park tour as I'm doing. I ain't about that life. Uh, so over there you got that you got that thing that I can't really talk to you about because I don't even know what it's called uh, I just I'm not really rolling with the water park shit right now we're walking up toward Renegade which I had very high expectations for except as you can see it's fucking closed um yeah I did get on it later so I'm not gonna be like bullshit like um, but I mean yeah it's it's closed uh, I think that it is a very, very, very good roller coaster. Um, I originally, I had ridden Mystic Timbers multiple visits of Kings Island, and after I rode Renegade, I thought it was better than Mystic Timbers, and if it weren't for Mystic Timbers giving me like gargantuanly kick the fuck ass rides after this trip, I would still have Renegade ranked higher than this. 
which is a pretty remarkable thing. I really like that lateral first drop. Um, it's pretty goddamn sick. Um, it provides a really, really refreshingly different layout from other GCIs. And as a, it feels like a remix of sorts of other GCIs with you know the, the way the forces go. It really is a very different experience from uh, Mystic Timbers and Prowler, which I think still is the best GCI. Like right, I got you know, right now, as far as GCIs are concerned, I have Prowler as my 28, Mystic Timbers as my 29, Renegade this one as my 34. So pretty close, right? With for context, King Ka, Time Traveler, Diamondback, and Zeus are the ones in between in my brand kings and then like lower you've got shit like I got under that I have 61 Thunderhead and 63 American Thunder so it is it's top this is top tier A tier American GCI for sure I mean it's not like you know Wood Coaster in China which looks like the Holy Grail I hope it still runs um, yeah let me let me go off on a fucking tangent about that uh, I learned something that there's like a, a channel Coaster Critic or something who, who told me something that confirmed another thing that I saw that over in China, you can see Excalibur's fucking closed. Everything's teasing us, but it'll, yeah, look, it looks like a, yeah, that's great. Um, so basically in China, they only open roller coaster. They only allow you to operate a roller coaster for 25 years, 20 to 25 years. After that, it is done. It has a shelf life on day one of it existing. So as a result, most Chinese amusement parks have only like one or two roller coasters. And the reason why is because what the fuck is the point of investing in more and more in different, you know, because they're, they're gonna have to take them down. And as a result, the wood coasters are just hyper neglected because they're still under that bullshit. So wood coaster, which is, just watch the YouTube of it, wood coaster POV. It, it looks like the best thing that's ever happened, but I hear that it barely runs nowadays. And when it runs, it's gotten rough as shit. And the reason why it's is just neglect, and that's really shitty. Um, and that that is where GCI maxes out, and nobody gets to ride it except for people who went on a theme park review trip in 2009 or something like that. It's, it's a complete fucking tragedy. So as far as you know, you know, the rest of us are concerned, we have to play with Prowler, Mystic Timbers, Renegade, Thunderhead, etc. Renegade is definitely the quirky cousin of the mix, but fun, super intense, amazing forces, really good shit. Um, I think we just hit the the, the mouse since whenever it doesn't really matter. I already talked to you about that. Man, that is a cozy life for that little kid in that little wagon right there. Like, dude, you're literally in bed in the shade at Valley Fair. Like, that is vibing. So we're going through the exit only because as I told you, we got the fast lane plus, you know, privileged people shit. Um, honestly, look, the, the actual privileged people are those who live near a park with eight roller coasters in it. I'm not privileged. I live in New Orleans where there's one roller coaster. And man, that's like right on its ass. That's not what I'm trying to do. I'm pretty sure I'm not even paying attention to what I'm filming. He's like, who's this guy? Um, and uh, so we so we get let in, I guess. And anyway, I got three or four rides on this. And I really, 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 really like it. Um, Valley Fair, people in Minnesota have a very good roller coaster on their hands. I've heard a, a couple people give the take that, uh, look at that, we were like the first ones to find it too, you see that shit? The ping pong, we saw it right when it opened. Uh, a lot of people, not a lot of people, but I've heard a few people say that this is the actual best GCI, and I don't fault them for having that opinion because as you have a lot of wood coasters that largely do the same thing, this one does diversify, and I've got to give credit to it for that. It's it's a damn good roller coaster. And while I guess I continue to stall for time, <laughs> um, I, I, my wood coaster rankings really were shaken up on this trip because I went on so much more shit in the, uh, the Minnesota, Wisconsin, etc. area. So I thought I would just recap now um, where my wood coaster rankings are. My uh, number one wood coaster right, is always the Voyage and that's never gonna change. But then Hades 360 crept in. It's my number five. And I can't wait till y'all get to the Mount Olympus review so I can just gush about that because it is not as rough as people are talking about. It must have gotten track work or, track work or everyone's lying. Then El Toro in three, Ghost Rider in four, Shivering Timbers, my overall 11, my now top five roller coaster. Unbelievable. You know, it is just a, a, a B&M hyper, but rough and woody. And uh, 
Incredible, 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 blah, blah, blah. incredible. Then after that, six, The Beast, seven, Switchback, eight, Lost Coaster. Sorry, I, I love quirky coasters more than everyone on planet Earth. Then nine is Outlaw Run, 10 is Phoenix, 11 is Raven, 12 is Legend, 13, Prowler, 14, Mystic Timbers, and that correlates with my 29 overall. Then Zeus. Uh, Zeus, I cannot believe how much I fucked with that roller coaster. And after Colson and I wrote it, we thought it was marginally better than Renegade at number 34 overall, which which we just wrote. Um, incredible roller coasters up there, but man, if, you, if you're from the South, you really have no idea what the hell the wood coasters are all about unless you travel like super freaking far away from where you live. And I'm glad I have it. I'm glad it's, it's worth it because man, there's some real gems up there. Anyway, uh, we're walking, um, I guess, right back up to, look at that girl, she's happy. Skippity doodle day, zippity doodle. All right, so we're walking, I guess, to Excalibur um, and trying again. I think that's because, you know, Excalibur is open. No, it's not. Renegade's open. No, it's not. Excalibur's open. Yes, it is. So, you know, that's what we're doing. It's, it's, the park is teasing us hardcore because I'm sure they're, they're, you know, maintenance department ha is fully staffed because they're trying to get away with paying them way under industry you know wages that should be you know paid i'm sure they don't pay them properly music parks need to fix their shit on that but look look I I allegedly this is actual excalibur footage of the actual roller coaster actually running can you believe this shit take a picture impossible impossible shit so we were just freaking out like this was such a a joy that we were going to be able to ride this because we were certain we were 100 percent certain that this roller coaster would not open and um that w was we were expecting it to suck and the reason why it's so valuable is that if you've ridden gemini at cedar point basically imagine that not dueling so a single track except crazy so that kind of janky like hybrid rail like on a mine train over wood supports imagine that but like hyper a little drunk and crazy that's excalibur the forces are wild as shit i had such a fucking good time riding that roller coaster that it made my number 52 at the time it had made my top 50 a roller coaster like that anyway as we're walking away we um we we got our ride and then we went back for more and it was gone so it was open for 15 fucking minutes no 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 this is this looks like i'm lying to you we went to get back on it again but it broke down in the station like due to a temporary delay bullshit that delay was three hours okay completely sucks every complete fuck uh but so that was it it was it was open intermittently i think maybe twice for 15 minutes and that was it for the day and at 3 p.m they I, yeah it was the second time they opened it so we got teased into going back to excalibur a few hours later and right as we got to the gate we saw it running and the and the, and the guy said this is the last train of the day because let me translate what the bullshit he said but let me translate that it's because we're giving up because we don't want to try to open this roller coaster anymore even in this part of the season where it is open they only open at peak season that's that's why it hadn't operated yet because this is early june it's because they'll probably cite staffing issues but really it's just because it's just a pain in the fucking ass for them to roll do that thing so it's like weekends only i'm sure and then even then its reliability is absolute dog shit so i'm just super privileged to have gotten the one ride but had first of all had i been at valley fair for longer than three and a half or four hours or whatever we were here for and had been here on a normal wednesday like the actual kind of vibe i go for in amusement parks then i would have ridden that thing like nine times i might have ridden that thing more than renegade honestly because i just love 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 unique experiences and that provided one i i like over rank coasters that are one of one where you have to go to this park to experience that exact freaking thing look at the shadow um and that was just a great example of one it's so fucking weird and speaking of fucking weird this thing right here wild thing 
Um, I was told that have you, if you've ridden Steel Eel, which I have, and Mambo, which I have, and the Dorney thing, which I haven't, uh, that this would be kind of, you know, pretty, pretty mid or low tier kind of bullshit compared to those because it doesn't really do anything. Like where you expect forces, it doesn't have any. I think people were being a little rude. I mean, is it the best roller coaster ever? I mean, I don't really think so. Where's Wild Thing on my shit? Number 147, yes, I don't have it ranked very high, but compared to other Morgans, let's see. I mean, I guess I could just go ahead and do that real quick. So my Morgan rankings, I got 46 at Mamba, because, uh, 46 Mamba, because I swear to God, that thing, um, that thing slaps now. You need to ride it. It's MambaXL200.com. And then pretty close to number 46 is that number 147 is Wild Thing, which is this. Then Steel Eel at 157, and then Santa Monica's yellow bullshit uh, at 216. So look at this line I'm skipping, um, because we're, we're, by the way, it's not much. I think it's like $55. Michigan's Adventure was 50 so just because you're spending $175 for Fastlane Plus at Knott's Berry Farm, you can't assume that other parks are going to be that expensive. Check that edge out. If you're going to Valley Fair and you're not using Fastlane Plus, when the crowds look like this, you're in you're dumb shit. Because it, if you were an average guest coaster enthusiast here, visiting Valley Fair for the only time, and you were there for, let's say, something normal like six or seven hours, you would have gotten on three rides. How was that a pleasant day? I would be leaving the park less happy than when I came in, which is the antithesis of what the fuck is supposed to be going on at an amusement park. You're supposed to be leaving with a smile on your face and not dejection and rejection and, you know, sunburns and being sick of other people because you're listening to their shitty conversations in line. It's, it's not good stuff. Get your fast lane plus or just don't go if, if Saturday is your only option. If that's the case, I, I'll pray for you because that shit sucks every ass. I mean, like, any chain park, you need to be going to that on a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, or Thursday or else you're making mistakes. Because if you go when they go, then you don't get to go on the fucking rides. Like, you wait, look at that line for Wild Thing. I think that was 75 minutes or some shit like that. Who wants to wait in that bullshit? I mean, seriously, yeah, those bugs are fucked up, man. They're all in your face and stuff. Um, so we're going. This guy has a San Francisco backwards hat. Dude, like, looking at those girls weird. That was kind of weird. Well, maybe he's, maybe that's her dad, their dad or something. I don't know. I don't even know what I'm talking about. I'm just really just, just kind of talking about brews and spirits. I need to get one of those when I finish this video in, what, what? 20 minutes or something like that. I'm gonna reward myself by having a, a brew and a spirit um, uh, at the same time. Uh, maybe I'll just get like a, a shot of Jameson and uh, I think I have some Juicifer in the fridge. That'll be pretty good. Um, and Scotch, I got Scotch. Why am I talking about any of these things? Uh, what's this flat over here? I didn't ride it, but I can, I'm sure I wrote it in another pocket. What is that? Oh, it's like one of those swing bullshits. I love those things, man. They, I, I'll, I'll talk about the one at Cedar Point because I didn't talk about it when I was visiting Cedar Point on this YouTube channel. Those things slam. You need to, you need to ride that. And because if you like swings of any sort, it's basically just that, just for giants, you know? You know your childhood swing, except crazy. Very, very cool. Hi, hi, something arcade. I don't know. I'm high. But I'm not in arcade. Okay, I'm gonna use that as an excuse to hit this weed again real quick. These Delta 9 pens are just, I can't believe they exist. They're the best thing that's ever happened. All right, uh, coasters. I haven't eaten at this one, but I mean, who hasn't been to a few Cedar Fair parks and not eaten at coasters at one of them? It's, you know, your, your six out of 10 thing. It'll, it'll feed you. It'll go into your wallet a little more than, than you want it to. But I mean, it is what it is. Don't know shit about the Grand Carnival at Galaxy. Um, I think this restaurant's just called Roasted Corn. The Deluxe is literally delicious. Well, nobody can enjoy the deliciousness of roasted corn when nobody's manning the station because as as we were, we were, we were talking, um, I'm sure this park is at 40% staffing of what they actually want. And the, the way you do it is you just consider giving fewer bonuses bonuses to shareholders and instead taking that bonus and giving 200% raises to all of your ride operators and 
all of your concession stand workers and, you know, maybe don't make them feel so expendable, you amusement park chain motherfuckers. Just, just, a, just, a, just a thought. You go, to a par you go to a park that actually takes care of their employees and you can just t see the difference. Like, Hirsch and shit? Come on, man. I don't know. Shareholders, fuck them. And anyway, so what are we looking at? Oh, God, I film like an asbestos dick. Fuck. Gives me a headache watching my own footage, I'm, and I know I'm doing that to y'all, I'm sorry. Ugh, cotton candy is not something I enjoy at all. Um, I am probably the least picky eater on planet Earth, and I'll have really whatever, but cotton candy, how do y'all enjoy that shit? It's basically, it, it's, it's a hint of a flavor with no enjoyable texture, and then all it does is leave a sticky residue. What's these corn dog shit? Okay, I would want one of those, like, I've never wanted like some like stuffed bullshit. That corn dog looks like some funny stuff. Just have that in my house and everyone's coming in like, what's up with the giant corn dog? That, I'll fuck with that. I might even play their like rigged amusement game to try to win that shit. Sure. That turtle's cute, I guess. Um, what am I doing talking positively about concession stand shit with stuffed animals? Because every time in other videos I walk by all of that shit, all I'm doing is roasting it and complaining about it. And here I am being positive. I think, oh, I know why I'm being so much more positive than usual. My dry spell ended and I got laid. I'm getting laid now. That's what it is. It's been a fucking while. You remember my fucking King's Dominion video where it's talking about like, man, I wish I could cuddle on a mock bobsled, but you know, I don't have the access to that right now. Cool. That's why I'm in a good mood. I'm sure you noticed. Um, any, actually, I'm sure nobody noticed because the only people who click this video and are still watching are people who live in Minneapolis. And now they're like, what is this fucking guy talking about? I assure you it's not very important, so we should move on. Over there they have one of those swing things, and honestly, in some parks, that's honestly one of the scariest rides there because you feel so exposed and vulnerable really up high up there, but when you are high, high up there, it changes the game. It makes it go from like a mid-tier kind of like family flat ride thing to a lot of scary fun. Fudge is great taffy sucks. I don't know, fuck with taffy. Fudge is good though. Caribou coffee. Look, I was in Georgia and on the day I was rained out and was like forced to live my life with my friend instead of going to the Six Flags, which wasn't open for us. And the first thing we did when we had wet socks and I was already pissed off having a bad day is, okay, let's get some fucking coffee. So when we drove to downtown Atlanta, we went to Caribou coffee and look, I'm no spokesman for them. But the coffee I had there was top three I've ever had, and I left in a good mood when I went in in a bad mood. Like, cheers to Caribou Coffee. I gave them a 100% tip. That's like, great. And they were friendly, and anyway. Route 76. I'm assuming that's the Minnesota shit, because who's heard of that? Route 66 is the only one that anybody's heard of. Pilter? <laughs> I like that name. It's terrible. It's a terrible ride name, but I'm giggling at it, so I guess it's all right. Uh, what's going? What else is going on? The white like post and wild thing, and maybe sometimes it isn't worth filming. I, I guess maybe it is because like the whole point is to give you guys a full park walkthrough. But what really hinders the experience of narrating these videos is when the park walkthrough is just immaculate at uninterestingness. Um, that what I said made no sense. But this is just such a concentrated area of nothing that it really becomes difficult to talk about. Uh, there's something, there's the left, there's a very full parking lot because I'm a stupid chit who came to this amusement park on a Saturday. Don't do that. The only parks that you should be visiting on Saturdays are really like regional, local, tiny parks. You know, the, the, the not, not chain parks. That's not fair. There's like this guy. Um, so ahead of us, I'm not sure what we're going to next, but I'm assuming it's the intimate impulse. How many minutes are left in this freaking video? I think we have, ooh, I'm down to nine. Ooh, nine minutes and there's wild thing. Honestly, I, I don't have much bad to say, not, too many bad things to say about about wild thing. It's a pretty fun ride. And I mean, is it a B&M hyper? Not even freaking close, but it's fine. I mean, all this park really needs is an actual thrill ride, like a big, like throw a giga or something. Be nice, be nice to a homie. And I think the lineup can be improved pretty well with maybe get them an RNC and get them a big, like, you know, an infinity or some, some kind of just not overly expensive, but good ride. And this park will be a sick lineup actually. 
Um, maybe get rid of High Roller, or RMC that piece of shit. That's the one that you need to RMC, because that's a really crap roller coaster. I don't recommend it to many people. Um, only people who are collecting credits are people who want to be whelmed. I mean, it does nothing in either direction, other than be like, wow, I don't, I don't know if it was worth waiting the three minutes in my fast pass line to get, to get on that shit. So Steel Venom, um, even though it doesn't have a twist twist like Wicked Twister did, it has a twist spike. This is still the best Intamin Impulse just because of the fact that it has the hold break still working. That hold break is so fucking like off-putting, but in a really good way. Um, the only comparable feeling I've, I, I can name is an example that like fewer people have written, so I don't even know how it's helping anybody is uh, the, the holding break on X Coaster at Magic Springs. It, where it basically catches you in midair and just <clears throat> like, holy shit. So, so you basically get like punched in the ribs by a break while you're vertical. Um, it sounds horrific, but it's, uh, I think it's great. I think it's fun as fuck. It's like very, very weird. And also when you're like blasted out, baked, it's fucking actually scary. <laughs> anyway, you, in a minute impulse, you, you, it's, it's a great model. I wish, really what I wish is that they just made a couple more full circuits, man, and they didn't die like Vol Volcano the Bat, blah, Volcano the Blast. This, these, the launches on these are super intense, super fun, and the only thing I have against them is I just wish they were longer and I wish they did more shit because being a shuttle boomerang plot looking roller coaster, it feels like it's such an unfulfilled thing like inverted intamins if done not i won't even need to say if done well i would say inverted intamins if done at all especially if they all have a launch will be better can easily dethrone the best bn the best bnm inverts montu nemesis alpengeist all that shit those roller coasters are easily going to to um go down to any intamin invert that tries I really hope that one day they decide to attempt that other than... Yeah, don't they have the one in China, though, that duels that one's inverted and one's on top? Yeah, that thing. Go watch that POV. I forget what it's called because all of their names are Steel Steel Twist Dragon Coaster Area. You know, their names are horrible, so you can't remember which one's which, but they have the dueling intimate in China. So they, they I guess they still will do that if the client wants it, so maybe it's not an expired model they more parts please do that an inverted shuttle not sorry an inverted intamin with a launch will easily become the best ride in like any park like fuck i really would like that that's what i want for christmas i want that more than a, a, a t-rex or you know any of that stuff the only thing i guess i want more is just more large-scale gravity groups like like the voyage and hades 360. I, I love Gravity Group, and I digress anyway, so we are um, about four minutes away, um, and we're going to go to that Opus Group bullshit thing that should be converted to an RMC uh, as our last thing, I believe, before... I, I, I hope I got the whole park. I think I was going through the credit list in this park, and I think I got everything. If I didn't, please don't shoot me in the face, even though I deserve it. Uh, let me see. Well, I'll even go in inventory of Corkscrew. We walked past that. Cosmic Coaster, I have no idea, but I think we did the Snoopy shit. It was closed. Who gives a fuck? Excalibur, we hit it. High Roller, we hit it. I mean, we're hitting it. We're walking to it right now. Mad Mouse, we hit it. Renegade, we hit it. Steel Man, we hit it. And uh, Wild Thing, fantastic. And they're defunct coasters, by the way. They, they actually had a coaster called Mild Thing, so it's not just a meme. Alan Herschel, Little Dipper. Hmm. Ha. And their other one was called Rails. A Schwarzkopf wildcat, wildcat called Rails. What a weird ass fucking name. Anyway, so as a recap from the first video, we started in Arnold Park. We went for a few hours there. Then we hit this place for like four hours. And then thankfully our third stop on the same day was in the same city where we went to Nickelodeon Universe and had dinner with my friend's mom and dad. and wholesome nice way to end the day i guess but it was still like a long long goddamn day and i believe after that we like kept driving i'm like forgetting how it all went but yeah we either way the next day was we hit the next day on this trip a sunday we went to all three of the wisconsin's 
Um, wait, it took this long for me to hit the corkscrew? Man, I don't remember that being the chronology of my... Oh, you know what? Okay, okay, yeah. The, yeah the, I think I remember the logic of why. Is because... If I'm going to miss any credits here, it's going to be what's probably and became actually the worst Arrow Cork crew. You know, it's not exactly a highlight of my day, so it's like, all right, I'll get the credit because I have to. It's fine. I mean, dude, it's, it, it's, it's, I'm glad it's there over not existing, I guess. But that's about, you know, as excited as I can get for a ride like that, you know. I mean, I love aerodynamics to death, but those things fuck up. I mean, Corkscrew at Cedar Point is better, and Corkscrew at Cedar Point is the worst coaster at Cedar Point. You fuck all that, you know. Um, so anyway, um, I'm, I'm, I still have two minutes to fill. I was so ready for this to be the end of the video. All right, so shaved ice. Yeah, yawning. You see, yeah, it's the. I'm with your energy, my my friend, because I'm yawning as I walk. I kind of, I guess, again near Planet Snoopy. Who gives a fuck? Or, you know, th this video should have already ended, but since I don't know how to edit shit, and I've already like merged all my GoPro footage from this park to make this vo to do this voiceover. There's no way I'm gonna clip this right now. I just don't have the headspace to be doing all of that in my one take looking ass recorded videos. You just have to tolerate these last two minutes of. Actually, you don't. You can just X out right now. You know, you don't have to listen to the rest of what I'm doing. Nice waterfall. Um, we're getting closer to you know Opus Group Excellence right now. And I think it's hilarious how that's how I end this video. Motherfucker, man. I am a really good, talented guy. Um. Mm. <laughs> Fuck, it's really hard. Like, why did it... F note to future self. When you're recording a park walkthrough, try to aim for the most interesting thing in the park as near the end of the video so you can end up with a bang rather than a whimper. Right now, I've you know I had all my, I've already exhausted the whole story about Excalibur and you know Renegades a, a great ride and all that etc cetera, etc. Cetera. I mean, that's about as much as you can really talk about in Valley Fair. And then I just ended walking through ch children's areas and shit. And, oh, is that because you have? I guess it's because you have to go through the children's area to get the fucking high roller. So man, that's awful. So you have a roller coaster that is one of the worst wood coasters in the United States, and then. You have to go into a children's area to wait in a long ass line like this. Like that looks like 20 minutes, right? Like fuck off. To ride this Opus group shit. You have to go through a kid's area and wait in a line to ride a bad ride. And this is how I end the video. Well, I guess to summarize, um, Valley Fair in Minnesota, do I recommend it? If you're a local, yeah. If you're a coaster enthusiast getting all the credits, absolutely. If you're someone who has a limited time and a limited budget and, you know, limited resources, fuck that. I mean, I'm, I'm glad I came, but anyway, um, thanks for coming with me or something.